tabula rosa of a man. His sapience molded as one would onto a wax tablet, should empiricism allow. Who could this be? And who will he become, forged from nothing, and destined for everything? Uh, anyway, this is Tower of God explained poorly by yours truly, a friendly single cell organism. This little guy is eaten whole by a weird fish, while an equally strange rabbit welcomes a group of people to the Tower of God. Someone explains in poems that whoever climbs the tower will become a god and introduces the main characters, Rachel and Yoru. Here they are right now. Yoru tackles Rachel in a dank hallway to prevent her from leaving him. She turns into leaves and disappears through a massive door, which definitely traumatizes Yoda. He is sucked in also, then wakes up to find himself enshrouded by the color purple. Yoru is approached by an alien who introduces himself as Haydon, the caretaker of the tower. Yoru is shook. Haydon seems to know everything already and instructs him to ascend to the top. Yoru is shown the test to enter, break an orb while avoiding being consumed by a fish. He immediately runs for it, but is stopped by a schoolgirl and her goblin servant boy. Their volleyball teaches him how to speak Japanese, and the feisty woman berates Yoru for being something called an irregular, an outsider who entered the tower through the gate from earlier. Haydon intervenes, introducing the girl as Yuri, princess of Jihad, and threatens Yoru with execution. The princess feels that was unnecessary, and notes that his test is impossible for a veteran of the tower, let alone this little guy. She accentuates the impossibility part, then flirts a bit. Haydon doesn't budge on making the test easier, but Yoru doesn't mind. He recommends that Yuri lend Yoru a blade called Black March, a legendary sword which changes efficacy based on the wielder, so she lets him borrow it. Yoru wants to climb so bad, he is berated for not valuing his life, and enters the arena. The fish excitedly gobbles Yoru up like a bowl of soup in winter. Yuri is shook and enraged. Her manservant, Evan, proclaims that this is the proper way to fight a big fish, and Yoru bursts forth from its maw. Yuri's houseboy continues by explaining that the purpose of this test is to overcome the fear of death. A regular person would never fight in such a ridiculous way. He figures that Yoru must have a motivation which fuels him. Orb is hard. Haydon's got a smirk on him. As he stabs away, Yoru has a flashback to when he was a troglodyte, squirming to find the sun. Rachel was the first person he'd ever seen, and began caring for him. She tells him about this cool thing called the sky, which has sparkly bits in it. The memories of Rachel fuel Yoru's determination, but this also attracts the fish. Evan yells at him to ask Black March for help, despite Yuri's doubt that it will answer. So he does, and March-san responds. A babe emerges to ask about Yoru's motivation for climbing the tower, but Yoru don't give a hoot nor a holler about it. He gets a free hug, which gives him power, I think. Yuri is jealous. The orb explodes, and Yoru is sent to the next level. He still has that legendary weapon, though, so the princess runs off to get it back. Haydon excitedly turns the fish into giblets. While traveling, Yoru's babe warns him about the effect that time has on people, explaining that when he is reunited with Rachel, things will never return to how they were. He sleeps and awakens in a field of wheat. It isn't edible though. A cube explains the next floor is test. The 400 people on the floor must hunt each other for sport until 200 remain. Yoru instantly crawls around to avoid death, but Ponytail wants to kill. His sword is of no help, but mysterious arrows work pretty well. They didn't help their master though. There's always a bigger fish, I guess. Businessman MC fights demons. A lizard kills this guy's gun and watches for strong opponents. Bamboo fishing rod is strong. So is Black March. The businessman emerges from the wheat to say hello, and so too does the lizard. Rachel teaches Yoru philosophy in their cave. The lesson this time is morality. The three combatants stare at each other for a bit, and lizard man introduces himself. This is Rack Wraith Razor. He thinks the other two are turtles, and wants to hunt Yoru. Blue Turtle begins to monologue, but his intellectual conversation is much too overwhelming, so Rack attacks. Blue Turtle is looking for strong allies and runs off, but turns around after becoming too curious about Yoru. His sword. Rack is evaded, then vows vengeance as he flees. The statuesque flesh wall silently plobs away, as the blue turtle informs Yoru that he was a chill guy all along. He introduces himself as Kun, and immediately questions Yoru about Black March, a weapon only given to the princesses chosen by Jihad, the king of the tower. Yoru vaguely says that Yuri let him borrow it, and that there is someone he must find within the tower. Kun finds him even more curious, and they get going. Bamboo Rod Alien toasts a fella, and tries to get the samurai as well. His skill with a blade 
tracksuit is wacky. Purple tracksuit is ignored as a result. 268 remain. Yoru explains his past briefly, mentioning Rachel as the person he wants to see. Kun says she is his rule, and they become formal allies. Yoru has self-doubts about his strength. Then Rack finds his way to Pound Town. The test is over though. These guys made a crater. The next part of this test is to find two other people to form teams of three. This guy becomes a worm. Lizards must ally with turtles. Tracksuit gets a couple of strong partners, and Ack in hats. Rack remains determined to fight though. Yoru accepts his challenge, but drops his weapon. Rack is shook. They team up with him by force. Later, 120 people pass. Kun convinces Rack to be less violent by explaining how Yoru will be more fun to hunt after he becomes stronger. You're not you when you're hungry, and Rack becomes addicted to chocolate. Tracksuit is grateful and does karate in excitement. He's rejected. A couple of hooligans fight during the break and are berated by Lero Ro, an administrator. Kun explains how Lero is a ranker, one who has made it to the top. Lero Ro decides to do a test to call the numbers a little bit and juices all over them, forming a wall out of Shinsu, the tower's power. Anyone who passes through the Shinsu wall will be allowed to continue. Rero Ro monologues about eugenics, luck of the blessed, and stuff. Yoru was accidentally pushed to the passing side so he's all good. Kun doesn't have to worry now, but he finds this result suspicious. Liro squints with suspicion. The plebs struggle to pass through. Liro Ro makes a bet with Yoru on who will permeate through the wall first. Placing the right task questions on the line. They choose the same green alien who easily walks through. Yoru asks about Rachel, but Liro hasn't seen her. Then about irregulars, one who does not follow the rules of the tower. Liro explains the tower's composition. Outer tower, inner tower, and middle area connecting the two. This woman embarrasses herself. Lero continues on, stating that most live in the outer tower, where only those who reside there are allowed occasionally by Hadon to enter. I'm pretty sure Lero already knows that Yoru is an irregular at this point. Sleepy Worm Guy makes it through easily. This fella gets upset that Yoru was given special admission to the cool kids club and threatens Lero. He gets eaten up by the Shinsu, then has a mental breakdown. Our boys pass through, but Kun's briefcase has some trouble. Lero warns Yoru not to get too close to Kun, then pieces out. Some of the plebs scream their way through. Later, this guy recognizes Kun. Kun's sister wasn't chosen as a princess, so his whole family was sent into exile. In some kind of fever dream, his mother instructs him to do his own thing, regardless of the haters. I guess he was betrayed by this Maria-sama. Yoru discovers the sky and is hassled by Rack. He asks about stars, and Rack is slain. Apparently stars are a legend, and the sky was created to mimic the real thing using Shinsu. Yoru mentions Rachel's dream of seeing real stars. Kun gets curious and suspects Rachel of having ulterior motives, but Yoru fights back. Suddenly, a death cry signals the beginning of the next test, and another. This trash bag gimp shows up to give a hint. Kun is suspicious, but the bag man provides a decent theory. Kun becomes aggressive by stating that the inflatable sack is only trying to use them to test his idea. Colostomy wonder bag parries with the weak point of Kun's identity. Kun attacks with his knife, but stops short. Rack is sad that there wasn't a fight, and they are called into the testing room. Yu Han introduces himself as the director and proctor of this exam. He explains that they must simply open the correct door. They have one chance in 10 minutes to do so or they will be sucked into a hole. And so the test begins. Rack freaks out because he hates thinking, while Kun does some deductions with his big brain. Rack crawls around while Yu Han makes a bethy. Kun has doubts and is ensnared by intrusive thoughts of Maria-sama. She was his half-sister, who he helped become a chosen princess instead of his real sister because he caught feelings. Yoru has the same look in his eye that Kun had, that innocent, blank stare. Kun has a small mental breakdown, then Rack busts open a random door. It was the right choice. Instinct saves the day. Kun is shook. Yuhan reveals that the passing condition was to open any door within five minutes. Rack parades through the exit while Kun sulks. Yuhan reveals the moral of this test. There are times when you need companions who will open doors without hesitation, a metaphor for having the right mix of character archetypes to handle any situation. Yuhu seems omnipotent as he detects Kun's desire to protect Yoru's innocent blank stare. Kun is inspired and they continue. A few other groups do really well by using their own respective melons. Yuhan instructed the rubber sack gimp to give out hints just to play around a little bit. Yoru tries to bring up Kun's past, but is deflected immediately. Kun wishes that Yoru should see the stars with Rachel and then proceeds to think of his half-sister. Ah, 
This must be Rachel. Only three people actually passed the first test this time. This guy is scolded for culling so many prospective climbers and flees from his responsibility. Meanwhile, everyone is just waiting around. Yoru doesn't know how to buy canned bananas, but Shibisu saves the day. They introduce and wish each other luck. Lero Ro shows up with wonderful news. A voluntary bonus test with the reward of instantly being granted permission to climb the tower. It's a good deal, so everyone decides to participate. Lero explains the crown game. Five teams over five rounds of five minutes each to steal the crown off of whatever team holds it. If they're able to defend, then they win and stay till the next round. If the crown bearer leaves the throne or gets their hat stolen, they lose and a new team must take over the next round. The team who maintains control of the crown at the end of the game will win. Lero tacks on that another team will be joining the exam this time, which is worrying. Rachel. The alien goes against these guys first. She instantly annihilates the dual wielder and this guy with her floppy rod. Yoru's weapon vibrates in response. Her hardened dome deflects the zealot's punch and she sends him flying. Stick Boy runs for the crown with his homies, but aliens are faster and capable of making tornadoes. She puts it on, much to tracksuit's despair. Rachel. Yoru screams out Rachel's name through the bars. To no avail, he determines that she isn't Rachel. Sushi tries to take an axe place as king of the crown, but Lero informs him that is illegal. There is a big old list of rules here, which Rack reads. Shibi is worried, but is inspired by his samurai compatriot. Rack wants to fight, but Kun prevents him with chocolate. A couple of gates open this time. It's these goons. Wormfella is asleep. They all converse a little, then the battle begins. This guy's knife is sliced up and the homunculus is repelled. A four-eyed alien wearing a polo charges his flaming hand while Tracksuit unveils his killing arts to the women. He flirts while pondering his chances of success. He's easily grappled, but his homie comes to the rescue. Hats resists Shibisu's love while he thinks about the sleeping fella, who was the one suggesting that his team participate. Kun does some mind palacing whizbiz with his massive brain and figures that entering when they did was statistically the most efficient way to win, but only if they were sure to take the crown from the small rod alien princess. Loro goes for a sneaky beam of Shinsu but fails the assassination. Despite his wacky power, Black March vibrates in excitement and acts steams aggressively, then activates her green noodle. It sends him flying, but he is agile, despite the increasing number of projectiles. Lero analyzes the alien lolly's actions. Kun decides to give up on the game, when suddenly Yoru loses control over Black Marsh, which makes everyone nervous. Serena, Ho, and Laro are disqualified for fleeing. Black March is wily, and so is Anak, who questions his possession of the weapon and is disqualified for leaving the throne. She nerds out over Black March because she is a princess of Jihad who bears the legendary weapon Green April, then demands March be handed over. Yoru denies her, but she is stopped by Lero before eviscerating everyone. Instead, she makes a bet for possession of the legendary weapons. If Yoru's team survives till the end, he will be given Green April. If not, then Black March will be handed over to Anak. She intends to kill Yoda and take it away, but her proposition doesn't upset Lero. Kun and Rack are displeased, but this fires them up and the game continues. This girl calls Anak an imposter, which riles her up a bit. Rachel. Yoru apologizes unnecessarily and is complimented for not handing over his sword. He then has a flashback to Rachel teaching him not to betray women. Rachel. Kun continues to butter Yoru with flattery, detailing how despite being weak, he remains adamant in his innocent ideologies. The third round begins with a new cast of freaks slithering out of the woodworks. A massive hurricane of wind allows Kun to instantly acquire the crown, which is pocketed. Kun is attacked by everyone, but easily asserts his dominance. He casts the crown to the floor, inciting a scuffle amongst the plebs. It was a decoy, however. Rachel says it's alright if her psychotic homie murders everyone in the room. Yoru sits on the throne while Kun dumps a massive load onto the floor. Everyone is shook. Shibu comments on the magical bag, which seems to have the ability to copy stuff. Rack happily defeats everyone with a simple shockwave from his spear. Yoru is crowned king of the castle after their landslide victory. Yuhan drinks a soup, Kun makes a ponytail, and Rack eats chocolate. They discuss his cool bag, and so the fourth round begins. Kun has a plan to take a break in preparation for the final round. The goons all team up though. Never mind, some folks don't want to. They have a bit of an infight. 
all according to Kuhn's plan. He explains that he gathered allies by stuffing people in his sack during the first test, and has only now unleashed them to fulfill their oath. That's why his bag stuck to the Shinsu wall before. Tying his hair up was the signal to begin fighting. Rack is rewarded for his patience with chocolate, while everyone else is spaghettified. Yoru tries to apologize unnecessarily again, and the fourth round ends. The most fearsome of opponents emerges to participate. Yoru is distracted by Rachel's group. Kun finds them suspicious, and the fifth round begins. This booby ninja insect defeats everyone without much notice, and proceeds to attack Rack. She is an intimidating foe, but after deftly hurtling Rack, goes into combat with the psychotic lady from Rachel's party. Kun and Rack find their new opponents, and Rachel reassures Yoru that they aren't after the crown. Rachel is stoic and unresponsive. Rack and Blue Turtle are pinned in conflict, and question why the transfer team is helping them out. Kuhn takes care of his opponent, while this lady continues her fight with the latex fetishist, Rachel. Yoru is confused, then suddenly under threat after the psycho woman breaks a heel. Rachel is kill. No. This motivates Yoru to leave the throne. He is kill. No. Suddenly, Yoru summons a brilliant conflagration of golden pea, which streams elegantly around the room. Upon retaliating, time is frozen, and the super babe from before shows up to prevent him from going nuts. Later, Yuri and her homies are traversing the tower to find Yoru, fully aware of the insane power which he is capable of. Liro and Yu discuss the crown game's end. There is no winner due to the crown's destruction. The regulars get a break, and the big boys have instant coffee while discussing the game. Liro questions the purpose of the crown game, and pinpoints all kinds of anomalies in the test, such as two participants who were acquainted before entering, which is usually forbidden by Haydon. Yu responds by stating their purpose as administrators, to expel those who would bring harm to the tower. No one seemed to have met that criteria, so therefore, there's no reason to not hold the crown game. Liro mentions Yoru's sudden explosion of golden Shinsu, which technically defies the laws of the tower. Liro is suspicious, and ponders the nature of Yoru's Shinsu, stating to himself that it it was as if he had become Shinsu itself. Meanwhile, Yoru is in a coma, much to Kun's worry. Rachel arrives with her request, and that's the end of part one of season one of Tower of God. Hey, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I have a Patreon for those who feel like signing up. This series will be in three parts, since it's tough to reduce the story down to sizable portions. Uh, thanks again.